Today on the channel, I'm going to share with you 10 things that you should and shouldn't do in order to be successful in the music business. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a little bit of a different style video. I'm going to share with you 10 of the things that I think that you should do and 10 things that I think you should avoid doing if you want to be successful in the music business. Now this is just my list of things uh, that I want to share with you. I get asked from time to time from people, you know, uh, what, what does it take to be successful or what is some advice that you can give my kids or give to me in order to be successful and first of all let me let me state by saying that success is uh, a strange word it's really ambiguous how do you measure success i consider success as a musician as uh, really creating music and art that you're proud of and uh, growing musically throughout your career it doesn't necessarily mean fame and fortune Although that's nice, and that is certainly a barometer or a measure of success, uh, I think true success as an artist or as a musician really is uh, becoming good at your craft and making other people happy with your music and enriching others as well as yourself with your music. But having said that, here are uh, 10 things that you should do and 10 things that you should avoid if you want to be successful in the music business and maybe so um, in life. <laughs> so the first thing on my list is um, have a positive attitude, okay? That's one thing that you should do. That's the first thing on the, on the do list is have a positive attitude. It's uh, just as easy to be positive as it is negative. Nobody wants to work around someone who's grumpy, that complains all the time, uh, that the glass is has, half empty. Uh, you know, it's hard to be positive all the time, and, and I'm not saying that you have to be fake, but you got to sometimes put on um, a happy face and suck it up and have a positive attitude. It's infectious, and it makes you feel better also, and everyone is a lot more productive, and they want to be around you, and your audience wants to be around you if you have a positive attitude as well. So that's very important, staying in the positive mindset and not letting setbacks uh, just knock you down and uh, you know ruin ruin life for you you know you're gonna get a lot of setbacks in the music business more than you will successes by far but try to remain positive one thing that you shouldn't do is uh, is you know just brag and be negative and name drop uh, who you know musicians you know and have that negative aura about you because that drives people away and if you're looking for uh, any type of uh, band members or label interest or publishing, uh, other musicians just to work with you, people in general, promoters, if, if, you're, if you brag a lot and you've got a bad attitude and you're negative, uh, it's, you know, it's like you've got the flu. No one wants to be around you, man. It just brings negativity and it makes you feel worse and you'll be less productive as well. So avoid negativity, bragging, name dropping, and uh, in general, just a poor attitude. <laughs> uh, the second thing I would say that you should do is you have to listen. And I don't mean listen to yourself play or listen to other musicians. You, um, you just have to listen more and talk less. I'm guilty of this. Uh, this is probably one of the hardest things because I like to talk. I've got a YouTube channel, right? I think we all like to talk. We all feel like we have something important to say and we want to get our point across. But it's really, really critical to listen to your bandmates, listen to producers, listen to... Um, even if you are working with people who you know aren't as skilled as you are, it's good to listen and get their input because you'll be surprised at how good um, a lot of the ideas are that come from others and when you collaborate with others you'd never get that if you didn't listen and if you listen to people they're more apt to listen to you as well and you'll get your idea across as well so i think one thing that you shouldn't do is uh you know don't 
don't talk too much and don't over don't overplay don't when i say talk too much don't play too much with your instrument uh if you're at a sound check and the band leaders directing you or you're trying to talk through parts lay off your instrument you know less is more listen and and uh you know let the room have its moment to talk about the structure or the song or the ideas don't don't just play your instrument and make a lot of noise and try to draw attention to yourself cuz that that will not work good in your favor i know that firsthand all right the third thing that you should do is be on time being punctual is important i mean i get it with traffic and time constraints and things happen there's going to be times where we're late but try to be on time if your gig is at seven o'clock and load in is at 6 30 show up an hour before load in you never know what you're gonna um, what's gonna happen when you're traveling on the road you might have road construction you may have a flat tire um, traffic may just be abnormally bad you may not be able to find a place to park if you're going to a simple band rehearsal be there on time respect everybody's time because everybody sacrifices uh, themselves to be at the gig or the rehearsal or wherever it is and uh, it's just a sign of respect and professionalism so be punctual and if you're gonna be late make sure you let everybody know and try not to make it a habit and apologize for being late when you get there uh, so obviously one of the things you shouldn't do is be habitually tardy um, and no shows never ever have a no show and if you can't make a gig or you can't do something try to find a sub unless of course you're the main singer or it's your band and you can't make it you can't find a sub but if you can find a sub or somebody do that but don't make it habitual to be tardy or late um, that just that's unprofessional you'll ruin relationships with your band other bands that you're playing with club owners promoters etc all right and one thing that you should do is be prepared if you're doing a gig uh, or a session or you're coming to a rehearsal or you're learning new songs whatever the case is be prepared listen to the music beforehand a lot practice the part practice your instrument have your chords ready have your instrument ready to go if you play guitar make sure your strings are fresh make sure it's in tune it's set up right nothing says unprofessionalism than not being prepared for the part not having the right gear you know if you need a Les Paul and you're bringing a Stratocaster and it's just not the right thing or you only have one guitar and you break a string and there's no extra strings um, that's very rookie and amateur and you may not get called back you probably won't and if you do get called back um, you know it may it, it it may not be because they want you back maybe you're the only option and they regret it <laughs> and you don't want to be that guy right so be prepared uh, one of the things you shouldn't do is make excuses don't make excuses if for some reason you're having a bad day or something just apologize and do your best making excuses just makes it worse and it makes it look like um, you know that's just the type of person you are that you know you're gonna make excuses for everything apologize and put your best foot forward and be positive and listen <laughs> and uh, hopefully those attributes will get you through okay one thing that you should do is play to your strengths if you are doing a session or a gig and and, and you you're kind of a blues player or you're a pop player um, whatever the case is classical use those skills the best you can for the gig or the session or the writing session that you're in um, or the live performance don't um, be afraid to play to your strengths always put your best foot forward and let your audience hear what you do best you may be tired of doing what you do best because you hear it all the time but nobody else knows that so play to your strengths and that'll be a win for you one thing that you shouldn't do is uh, play something that you can't execute well so it's kind of like the opposite of playing to your strengths don't try to play a part that's above your your level or something you're not ready for be prepared and try to have the part ready but if it's not your if it's not your strength try to execute that part utilizing the strengths that you have okay one thing that you need to do is network uh, I'm not the best at networking I do a fair job at it now I think but 
early on in my career, that was one of my, one of my downfalls. I expected people to come to me and network, but you have to go out and and go to clubs and hang out. If you play shows with other bands, hang with those bands, get to know them, be their friends, find people that you can associate with. Um, as much as you don't like to, go out on nights where there may be another band playing, go support them. Uh, if you work at a music store or you go to a music store to buy equipment, get to know the people at the store, network with them, do writers nights, do um, local jam sessions, socialize with people on the internet. Uh, you'll be surprised how far networking will get you. And if you're looking for a gig or other musicians to play with, that's the way to do it. Uh, one thing that you should avoid is uh, the silo approach. Don't just lock yourself in your, in your silo and not get out at all. Uh, it's very difficult for me sometimes to socialize because I like my safe space and being home and doing my YouTube videos. And over the years, I have gotten farther and farther away from playing out because I've just done it for so long. But avoid being in your silo and only working with yourself or like one person. Uh, a lot of people will see that as you being standoffish and they may take it the wrong way and they may think that you're rude and that you're not uh you know networking properly and they won't they may be intimidated to uh if they're the kind of person that's uh in their silo uh you'll never work with them because you're both stuck in your silo and sometimes it takes someone that's a little bit of an extrovert to get out to get those people to talk to them and initiate the networking so initiate that network one thing that you should do is praise others. If you're working with other musicians or singers, even if they're struggling, praise them for what they're doing well. It creates positivity and it gives them confidence so they'll do better. And it also makes you feel better as a musician and you'll get compliments and it becomes uh, a more positive atmosphere and the synergy with those other musicians uh, will be much better. It takes a lot of pressure off the situation and uh, makes things better for everybody. So compliment and praise others and uh, don't be jealous. You know, that's another thing that you should avoid. Don't, um, don't be jealous of other people and talk behind people's uh, back. It will, what comes around goes around and uh, you may be talking bad about someone that's a person's best friend and it'll get back to that person. Then what do you do? You know, that does not help out networking. We just talked about networking. So uh, don't, don't speak negatively about others. Keep your bad thoughts to yourself and in your head uh, because uh, they might be saying the same thing about you. So just avoid that. Don't backstab and talk bad about others. One thing that you should do is be eclectic. If you're eclectic and listen to lots of music, you will grow musically. Um, as an artist and when you practice uh, it will open up new doorways for you and inspire you in ways that you didn't think uh, were possible. Listen to uh, other types of music. Force yourself outside of your comfort zone. You'll be surprised how much music and how many things are out there that you enjoy that you probably didn't realize that you would and it will also open up uh, your musical skills, your musical vocabulary if you start networking with other people, you'll, you'll have many more musicians and genres of music to network with and play and make money with, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, one thing that you shouldn't do on the opposite side of that is only eat one type of food. What I mean by that is only listen to one style of music. If, if hard rock is your thing, that's great. Play to those strengths, but listen to other stuff. Listen to the bands that inspired those hard rock bands. Uh, dig back in those catalogs and then start listening to stuff on the fringe. Whatever. Uh, there's a million ways to get into new music. Just don't listen to one thing uh, and get stagnant with it because you will not grow as a musician. One thing that you should do is um, learn. Never stop learning evolve okay you have to keep evolving as a musician learn new stuff identify your weaknesses and work on them and take lessons 
Even the best musicians in the world still take lessons. You can always learn from somebody. If someone can do something better than you can do, compliment them on that and ask them, how did you do that? And find out what it is and put that in your tool bag, your repertoire, and it will help you grow and you'll be happy that you did it, okay? Um, one thing that you shouldn't do is don't think that you're, you know everything, that you know, I, I'm, it, I'm, I've been doing this for 30 years or 50 years or 20 years, whatever the case is, been there, done that. Um, you don't know it all, you never will know it all, and there's always something you can learn from somebody, so don't have that mindset. Lastly, and this is probably one of the most important things on the entire list, and I'm not gonna get on a soapbox and preach to everybody, but you gotta stay healthy. I get it, Some, sometimes we can't control our health and our uh, illnesses that we have in genetics, but try to eat well, try to exercise, uh, take care of yourself. When you're healthy, you'll play better, you'll feel better, you'll be more motivated, you'll be inspired, and you will inspire others to do the same. You don't have to uh, join a gym and have a physical fitness routine and go vegan or <laughs> anything like that. But, you know, it wouldn't hurt to do a few crunches, lift a few weights, maybe jog or go running, get an elliptical machine, uh, watch your diet. It makes you feel better and it, it gives you the energy that you need and it's motivational. You sleep better and you're happier. So keep, you only have one body and you're only around this planet, uh, once okay you only you only live once so you got to make the most of it while you're here and the other side of that is one thing you don't want to do is avoid um substance abuse excessive substance abuse you know uh and like i said i'm not preaching but you know avoid uh avoid substance abuse the history uh has a long list of musicians who have ruined their careers or worse, have died at an early age or at their peak because of personal demons and things that led them down that path. So stay healthy and take care of yourself and be grateful for the gift that you have of music and artistry and take full advantage of it. Okay, so there's a list of 10 things you should do and shouldn't do if you want to be successful in the music business. I hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, please consider subscribing, comment below, and until next time, peace out.